In the next 10 minutes, I am going to show you how you can build your own API by writing very few lines of code and host in your machine. Let's see that guys. Before moving on, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you have not done yet and also press the bell icon so that you receive all the notification. So guys, what all we are going to learn is first of all definition of API and I am saying relearn definition because you have to forget everything you know about API and relearn it, okay? Then we will understand basics. I'm going to show you one API and what is uh, endpoint and API key. API request and response types, I'm going to explain you with fast API demo, pretty important concept here. And API test through GUI, I'm going to show you and some homework for you, okay? So going to be very informative video, guys. Please ensure you watch till end. First of all, let's relearn the definition of APIs, okay? So if you go to Wikipedia, if you go to any other place, the definition is very complex. Let me make it simple for you. Suppose this is a computer program on the left hand side. On the right hand side is another computer program. This is program one and this is program two, okay? The name of the program one is, let's say, aman.py, okay? aman.py. In aman.py, I want to add two numbers. What I want to do? I want to add two numbers. Okay, add two numbers. It's a very simple task I want to do in my program. But for some reason, I don't want to use Python some function or I don't want to write the logic. I'm lazy to do that. Okay, so there is a provision through which I can ask this computer program to. So what I can do, I can ask this computer program to Hey, can you add two numbers for me? And the program will say me, okay, give me those two numbers. At the moment I give those two numbers, this second program will return me the response, which means two numbers added, it will give me as output, okay? So what has just happened is, I'm using the logic written in program two in program one, okay? And this entire concept is known as concept of APIs. In this case, this is your root program, main program, and right hand side program, you can think of it as an API. So what is an API? An API is a place or is a program that you use in your program if you are lazy to write code or if you don't want to write code that has been written by somebody else. So you ask question in a particular format and you get response in a particular format. Now here I am saying adding two numbers. So you cannot ask add three numbers or you cannot ask multiply two numbers. You just have to ask, hey, give me the addition of these two numbers. So format is fixed. What you can ask and what you can get in return. That format is fixed. Okay. Let me show you one simple example of how an API looks like. So come here. I am in a website, visualcrossing.com. Okay, let me enter one more time. Here, I will click this link, weather API. So I'm clicking this weather API. So this particular page is called endpoint of an API. So what is an endpoint of an API? For asking your question, you have to go to the endpoint of an API, a point where API receives questions. Okay, so in this case, API is receiving question here. So here I will enter Bengaluru. So Bengaluru is the city for which I want to know the weather updates. And I will say create query. At the moment I say create query, the query has gone to the API and response also I receive within minutes, within seconds. So here you can say I can get the response in JSON, CSV, Excel, etc. And if I click on this chart, right? So I have data of Bangalore. So what is the temperature? What may be the forecast, etc. Okay, all these things I have. So what has happened just now, I went to the API endpoint, I asked my question and I got my response. But remember, there is a format fixed. I cannot ask any random question or I cannot give any random input, okay? What is an API endpoint? API endpoint is a place where you go and ask your question, okay? Now let's try to understand how we can build our own API in Python in few lines of code, just few lines of code, okay? So I'm going to my Visual Studio guys and I'm having a file here app.py, fine. I'm installing a package fast API. You can install this package as well. Very simple to install. And I'm assuming my machine learning model is a very, very simple model. So line number eight to 11, what I'm, what I'm highlighting now is my machine learning model. So what my machine learning model does, 
it takes two parameters age of the person and sex of the person and it is a supposed titanic data set so based on the age and sex it will say whether the person survived or did not survive okay so this is a simple rule based machine learning model i am saying below is a demo rule based model assume a complex model here fine but i will host this in the api form okay so what what i am trying to do is i will try to give a age and i will try to give a sex and try to find information based on whatever logic i have written here through this api so for that there is a decorator i have written slash predict then definition of the of the uh, function that runs inside predict so very simple logic here just you have to initialize first api create a decorator and write your logic okay so this is my code in my desktop there is a file called first api folder is there and this file is there okay and let me go to my command prompt and I'm inside desktop and fast API folder, okay, in Windows machine. I will just go here and say Python 3M UVCorn. UVCorn is the server on which it will run. App, app is the name of your file. Here app.py is the name, colon app and then reload. Okay, you can run this command as well. You say enter. At the moment you say enter, it will say, say you UVCorn running on 127.0.0.1 8000. That is your local host. Let me go to my browser and try to open that that address. So localhost 8000, 8000. So if I do like this, you will see details not found. Why? Because we are not asking any question. API is running here, but we are not asking any question, okay? So just to showcase you, just to demonstrate you, it is not, not how we do in the real world, but we do in the development process, okay? So if you go to the docs, right, then you will see a UI like this, fine? In this UI, if you click on this get right and you click on this try it or out. So here you can enter your age, for example, 21 and I will say F. So it will run based on our FLS logic, whatever we have write, written here. So any anywhere where sex is F, it will be a, a survived case. Okay. So let me go to my here and execute it. So I should get a response. You can see here response body survived is one. Okay, so that is what we expect. So this API is working fine. And as you can see here, if I go ahead and make the this as male, then it will be survived zero because that is the logic we have written in FLS loop. Okay, so this is how you develop an API using fast API, but there are things to learn here. So as you can see here, guys, request URL goes like this. So this is my request URL. In the URL, your age and sex are going as input. In the URL, your age, whatever age you give, whatever sex you give, that goes in your input. And then you get survive. For example, if I make this as F, it will say me, capital F actually, let me make it F, then it will say me survived one because female is surviving based on our FLS logic. But whatever we did now, that is for development purpose, testing purpose, if our API is working fine. Suppose I gave you the example of two Python programs, right? Suppose I want to call that API in a Python program. Then how can I do that? Let me show you that as well. Consume API.py is another file I have here. Here I'm importing requests. Then I'm saying my age is this, sex is this. Go ahead and call this URL. So as you can see, this URL is very similar to the URL I showed you now in the browser. Just that we are passing age and sex as the variables here. Okay. At the moment I run this, you will see that I will get a response survived one or zero based on whatever the logic. Okay. So here survived one is the response. Fine. So whatever way we are doing this particular uh, development, guys, this is known as the gateway. Okay, so there are two ways in which you can you can build your API or call your API. One way is called gateway, other way is called post way. In the in, sorry, put way, put way, not post way, put way. Okay, and here what you can say is uh, we are passing the URL in URL we are passing the variable, but this is not a very good practice. Okay, so there is an another way in which we can do that and that is by not passing in the URL the data. 
So for example, we can write a code like this. There is a package called pedantic I'm using here, but there are other ways of doing it. Okay. So from pedantic, pydantic, you call it pydantic. Okay. From pydantic, you got a base model. In this base model, you can give your inputs and same way you can write your logic. The difference between this method and previous method is just the way you are passing your input to the API. Okay. So this is supposed to be more protected. Why? Because if I want to consume this API, then I will create a payload like this. Okay. So you are saying consume put. You are seeing this payload and I will pass data is equal to payload. In this way, my API will be protected and my data will not be passed in the URL like it is getting passed in the previous method. Okay. So few important things to remember in the concept of API is for using an API, it should always be running. For example, this API is running here. Suppose I stop it. I press control C. So API is stopped. Now I can't go and ask any question to that API because that service is stopped. Okay. So if I, if I click this, right, then it will say it cannot reach that because I have stopped that. So to, to, you know, ask any question to the next program, your API should be running. And there are two main ways of doing that. I showed you, you should not pass your queries or parameters in the URL that is not safe. So you will want to use the second way and in practical more sophisticated ways as well. Okay. So what all we learned, let's revise it quickly guys. And I will give you a simple homework. We learned the definition. We understood basics, keys and endpoints. Okay. Keys. I did not tell you key is basically a way to protect unwanted requests. Suppose I went to this weather data and I gave Bangalore and I got the output, right? So somebody can misuse it. Somebody can do it multiple times or misuse it. Or sometimes some people want to charge their APIs with some money for those purposes. You know, key concept is their API key. Okay. Request and response type. I explained you demo and then we learn how to do using GUI homework for you guys. I built a simple model here. If else model. Please go ahead and try to host a machine learning model in the API and try to access it through the browser so that you get a good understanding of how the API is working. Okay. So I hope you understood all these concepts guys. See you all in the next video, wherever you are, stay safe and take care.